Ooh, well, this is what I've been looking for. Very glad that it has presented itself to me because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoy me being confused because that's most likely what's going to happen in this video. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast and on this channel, we go over try hacking, CTFs and live events as we go on our way to being a cybersecurity professional. On today's video, we're going to be going over Bedrock, an easy room on try hack me and and we're gonna be doing some live hacking as I try and figure out how to solve this challenge. If that sounds fun, then stick around. For all links, timestamps, see the description below and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we're on Try Hack Me and we've got our bedrock room open. Give that a sneaky like. Go to join the room, cool. Already don't know what I'm doing, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So if we have a quick look at our tags that usually give us a little bit of a hint, we've got the CTF, obviously, TLS, SOCAT and sockets. So TLS is pointing towards the transport layer security, a cryptographic protocol designed to provide communication security over a computer. The protocol is widely used in applications such as email, instant messaging, VoIP, but its use in securing HTTPS remains the most publicly visible. So the last two tags here, we've got SOCAT and sockets. Now SOCAT, I believe is another tool. Yes, flexible multi-purpose relay tool. It's purpose is to establish a relationship between two data sources. I think I've used this once. It was a while ago. It was like from memory, it was sort of like SoCat or Netcat. Like you could sort of choose between those two in this one instance. So limited experience with that. And then lastly is sockets like a network socket, uh, which is software, which is a software structure within a network node of a computer network that serves as an endpoint for sending and receiving data across the network. The structure and properties of a socket are defined by an application programming interface or API for the network architecture. Sockets are created only during the lifetime of a process of an application running in the node. So it's definitely something that we've used before. So we'll see how well this happens helps us as we go through our challenge. All right, let's get into our room. Should have hit start machine a bit earlier. So we've got Fred Flintstone and Barney Rupp. Barney is setting up the ABC web server and trying to use TLS certs to secure connections, but he's having a bit of trouble. Here's what we know. He was able to establish Nginx on port 80, redirecting to a custom TLS web server on port 4040. There is a TCP socket listening with a simple service to help retrieve TLS credential files, client key, and certificate. There is another TCP TLS helper service listening for authorized connections using files obtained from the above service. Can you find all the Easter eggs? Probably not. Please allow an extra few minutes for the VM to fully start up. Sure. So we've four flags or one password, three flags, Barney flag, Fred's password, Fred TXT flag, and root TXT flag. So it looks like we'll be um, getting a foothold as Barney and then having to pivot over to Fred the user before we prove esque up to root. I feel like this room is bigger than I was expecting. Okay, we're on the network and we can see our room. Let's start off with a rust scan. All right, so we see the port 80 as the they said there would be. There is an SSH and by the looks of the flags and the passwords, we're probably gonna find some sort of credentials off the web server and then try and SSH in as Barney as a guess. Uh, so it looks like that is it. Now, there was a mention of custom server on port 4040. So in the meantime, we can go check out what is showing on port 80. So we see here that it has redirected to this 4040. And we can see here that we do have this invalid cert, which we can go ahead and look at. So I'm not sure if any of these bits of data and info are gonna come into play. So let's just go ahead and accept the risk and check out the server. So we've got welcome to ABC, Habadabadoo Broadcasting Company. We're in the process of building a website. Can you believe this technology exists in Bedrock? Barney is helping to set up the server and he said this info was important. Hey, it's Barney, I only figured out Nginx so far. What the hell is a database? Bam Bam, his son, tried to set up a SQL database, but I don't see it running. Looks like it started something else, but I'm not sure how to turn it off. He said 
it was from the toilet and over 9,000. Nice. Need to try and secure connections with certificates. Okay, so looks like there is an SQL database running on a port over 9,000. So hopefully that Nmap scan will find something. Let's go ahead and look at our control U. So there's no hidden comments. I think we have enough to look at our next step. So let's go back. Uh, doing another Rust scan, we've now found three more ports. So cool. So that, I guess we did have that note, give a few extra minutes for the VM to fully start up. So that makes a bit more sense. Here's our server that's trying to authenticate. Uh, there's the custom TLS web server on port 4040. So let's see if we can get anything from these two extra ports. So going to port 9009, over HTTP looks like it leaves us hanging. So we might need to use like an SQL tool or something to look further at that. Then there's this port 54321. Also looks like it gives us nothing over HTTP. So if we use HTTPS, looks like we have this same invalid certificate. We go accept risk. We have an undefined, not authorized for access. So if we go back to our description, remember we did have a couple of points. There's a TCP socket link listening with a simple service to help retrieve TLS credential files, client key and certificate. And there's also another TCP TLS helper service listening for authorized connections using files obtained from the above service. So it looks like the 9009 port is this one here and we need to somehow get something from this, some sort of credentials to then look at the port 543 three, two, one, which will then allow us to get access. So if we look at our hint for this first one, we've got explore the higher ports, which we've already found. One is ready for a TLS socket with a key and cert obtained from port 9009. So I think we need to use SOCAT to get that key and cert from 9009. Uh, so let's find out a little bit more information about our ports here. So let's get Rust in to look at those ports again, and then we'll just hit an dash A for all against those ports. Um, so I'm just trying to muck around with SoCat. Can't really figure it out. We'll have to do some digging. All right, so our Nmap scan has finished looking further at our ports. So we know SSH, we know HTTP. We've already looked at that. And we can see here, there's that index. There's nothing new there. Um, looking at our port 9009. So this is where we're sort of trying to figure out how to use. We've got this PyChat or PickHat. I'm not sure what this is. So fingerprint strings. So I'm not sure if this is actually supposed to be some ASCII art and then it's responded with what are you looking for? This is making me think that I'm supposed to use Netcat or SoCat somehow to interact with this and this is going to be a response that oh, we would get. Uh, we can see here in 4321 that port we get this same error undefined um, like we saw. Reading through all of this jargon this is the same HTML that's shown on the main web page. Um, um, we can see here that it's talking about bam bam trying to set up SQL database um, and that came from port 54321 uh, and if I had to take a guess this looks like the same thing that we saw coming from port 9009 and then asking what are you looking for and then we have the 4321 saying that uh, error undefined not authorized. Alright so nothing really new here we still have to figure out how to use SoCat to interact with port 9009. 2009, I think. Oh, hello. Hey, okay. So just going back, this took a little while. So I must have been looking at this page. This is the 9009 port. So it is actually sending something. What are you looking for? Looks like the secure login is running on port 54321. Try connecting using SoCat. Thanks for uh, for helping me, Box. SoCat STDIO, so standard in out as a guess. SSL, machine IP, 54321, cert equals cert file, key equals key file, verify. Ooh, well, this is what I've been looking for. Very glad that it has presented itself to me because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so this will be the machine IP that we've got here. So there's still a couple of missing pieces here for us. A cert file and a key file. I'm not sure where or what they are. Just for the heck of it. So this is what we would do if we have the cert file and the key file. No such file or directory cert file. So running this without our cert file and our key file, we get the same response that we saw over HTTP. So we're definitely 
definitely on the right track uh, and we're just missing this cert file and this key file. Um, so trying to understand SOCAD, just looking at some examples of cert equals path to client.pe. I am stuck. So all the high ports, one is ready for a TLS socket. So we know which one that is, 43255 with key and cert obtained from 9009. Oh, wait. Okay, so after playing with Netcat for a little bit, if we use the dash V so we can see output, we can actually interact with port 9009. So I'm not sure if it's going to give us the same output that we saw here. Okay, so I've just typed in cert and it's shown me the certificate. Copy that. Just go ahead and make a cert file and paste that in. And if we head back, can we just say key? And we have got our private key. Cool, thank you. So we'll nano key, paste that in. So now we have our key and our cert. So using our helpful command, which is a bit of a lifesaver. Now we should be able just to put our key is equal to key because that's what I've saved the file as. Our cert should just be equal to cert because that's what I named the file as. And now if we paste in our IP, we've got something. Yabba dabba do. Welcome Barney Rubble is authorized. And we're in bedrock. So do we have a shell on the machine? Unrecognized command. The service is for login and password hints. So let's say login. Login is just Disabled, please use SSH instead. Password? Password hint is hash. User is Barney Rubble. Okay, cool. May have been looking at a write up which says hint is the password. Apparently, this is the password. Okay, so apparently I'm getting caught up on the actual username, um, it's just Barney. It's not Barney Rubble. The instructions were a little dodge, but that should get us in. So good lesson. I should have played around with the username. So we've now SSH'd in, we've got Barney and we've got Fred here. Oh, I've just missed, there is a Barney.txt, but I'm also noticed there's a SSH. So let's just look at this Barney.txt. All right, there is our first flag and we can just paste this in. Awesome, so there's one. So next up, we've got what is Fred's password. So I'm gonna see if we can look inside this. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got permissions to. Yeah, uh, there is a Fred.txt, but it looks like the same. No go. So if we go back to try hack me, I've got a hint. You can find Fred's password the same way as Barney's with Fred's credentials, key plus cert. So if you just type in Fred, uh, you'll actually get an ASCII art of Fred Flintstone. So that's kind of funny, I guess. We're not gonna get anything from here. Fred's password, yeah. So I remember that the sudo dash L will give us the commands that Barney can run. Looks like we have user bin cert utility. Cert tool usage show current cert, cert ls. Well, hello. Okay, so these are owned by root. I have read access though. Um, so these are in user share ABC certs. So can I cat out Fred certificate? No, but somehow I can look at this. I go, oh, can I just generate a new pair? Can I just go Fred, go Fred Flintstone. Epic fail, what am I supposed to do with Fred Flintstone? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh man, I'm s why? Um, Fred, mission denied. So after a little bit of reading, looking at other write-ups, um, we've got a dash and if we run that as sudo because we can, and we can actually get the output of this file. So first we'll look at Fred's certificate or it's generating credentials for user A. Oh, actually, okay, so I'm not really sure what it's doing then. Um, I'm gonna guess that it's create a new user based on Fred. I'm not really sure, but let's see what we can do. Let's grab this private key. Let's make a key file and paste that in. And with these new files, so that was the certificate. We have a client key and we should be able to cat this out because we have permissions. I think, I, I think the first thing I saw was the cert. So I'm gonna move that over to the cert and then I'll make a key, paste it in, but I'm sort of confused now. Yeah, no, I sort of of stuffed up. Let's just go nano a cert. We'll get rid of that and then paste in our certificate. Okay, so now we have a cert and a key. If we go back to how we connected over the validation, we just put a cert with these new files and a key. We now have a user share ABC certs is authorized. All right, so we still have Fred here. Login. Username. Current user. Is this a valid per cert? 
password. Okay, we have yabba dabba do. So I'm assuming that this is Fred's password. If I had to guess. Um, so I reckon we go SSH Fred at our IP and we paste in our password that we just saw. So that's Fred's password. Uh, so let, now we've logged in as Fred. We should see his, yep, there is his flag. So we can go ahead and copy that and we can paste that in. So then the last thing we need to look at uh, is root.txt. So looking at the hint, we've got root pass. It's a multi encode slash decode. Uh, it's given us a wink face to look at crack station so we'll have to, multiple encode does that mean it's just like a bunch of zip folders in each other sort of thing slew run sudo dash l uh, user fred may run all the following commands okay so we've got uh, base 32 and base 64 for this so we have a base 32 and then a base 64 string uh so i'm thinking uh cyber chef uh, i'm thinking uh, can we just use the magic from base 32 false results snippet so we just we need to figure out somewhere in here could be like maybe we just put that into no oh so the 32 decoded and the 64 decoded are giving the same this same hash i'm like i think it's a hash chucking that into crack station hasn't given a result uh we'll just echo this into root and then we'll just run this against hash cat so no hash mode matches the structure of this input hash um so it did say that it's multiple can I just go magic from base 32 sure if i'm going in the right direction here so do we just keep going so we just keep it on magic right oh uh, okay so you leave the period out at the end i think that's where i was going wrong okay cool 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 so we can switch users over to root and we can paste in the new password and we are definitely root so we'll cd over to root and there is the password that is encoded and there is the last flag so we'll paste that in and that was bedrock Ooh, awesome well uh yeah i hope you enjoyed that room bit of a live room first time i've gone through that challenge so it was fun pretty challenging overall it took nearly two hours to do this room so i learned a lot more about like netcat socat sockets uh so yeah it was really good for me i hope you enjoyed uh if you want to do all that youtube stuff like comment subscribe appreciate it otherwise i'm gonna leave a link for you to check out the last room which took significantly less time than this room also super interesting as far as ido our vulnerabilities go and that room was neighbor so i'll let you go check that out continue on watching and i will see you in the next one